je jure solennellement. His inauguration marked the end of a war fought among countrymen. After a period of violence that followed the disputed 2010 election, Alassane Ouattara prevailed over his opponent and the incumbent, Lauren Bagbo. But the wounds on both sides of the conflict are still raw, and political and social tensions in Ivory Coast are still simmering. People in this community in Duque, in the remote west of the country, are reluctant to even say the name Ouattara. Niahi is a community leader and teacher. He witnessed the human toll exacted by the attacks of pro Watara forces. When you come back from the bush, we had to be very courageous because corpses were all around the streets and smelled terribly bad. The children that you see around me here are all traumatized. When they see someone with weapons, they are scared. An estimated 800 people were massacred here. This woman says she lives in fear, which is why we've decided to protect her identity. I cannot show my face. We're still living in the same place we were attacked. And the people who attacked us are still here. Her 12-year-old son and her father were killed by pro Watara forces. She says people were burned alive in their homes and that children as young as five were executed. Where is justice? This is something that doesn't leave my heart. We don't have money to hire lawyers to seek justice for us. Our parents are dead. That's it. It's over. Even after Watara was re-elected in 2015, in what was the first peaceful presidential election in more than two decades. Reconciliation remains elusive. The International Criminal Court is now in session. And Lauren Bagbo, who still commands a large political following, is on trial at the International Criminal Court. Something seen by many in Ivory Coast as a further obstacle to peace. Instead of unifying Ivorians, the ICC is causing divisions. Bagbo is a son of this country and whatever may come, his people will never forget him and they need him. He must be held accountable, of course, but he must be held accountable here. It was here in this public square where seven women were shot dead during a march in support of Alassane Ouattara. Forces loyal to Lauren Bagbo are accused of carrying out the killings. The incident is one of the main charges the former president now faces at the International Criminal Court. The justice sought by Ouattara's government inside the country is widely seen as one-sided. Not one of his loyalists have been prosecuted to date. Rodrigue Dadje has defended a number of supporters of Lauren Bagbo, including his wife. He says the justice system in Ivory Coast is deeply flawed. Since the crisis of 2010, thousands of people have been sent to prison illegally. They live in terrible conditions. Madame Bagbo is famous, so we can criticize openly what she went through. But no one cared about these average people. Despite the economic strides Ivory Coast has made in recent years, a nationwide mutiny staged by soldiers in January served as a stark reminder that stability remains tenuous. Deep divisions pervade a number of the country's institutions, including the military. And few soldiers have been held accountable for politically motivated killings. Kone's brother was a police officer who was killed by soldiers loyal to Lauren Bagbo. One of his friends accused him of being a member of Alassane Ouattara's party. They tried to kill him using bricks. We are still waiting for justice, but we do not know what will be the outcome. But some supporters of Alassane Ouattara believe he's doing the best job possible, while others fear the past could be a prologue. And if and when Alassane Ouattara steps down in 2020, a power struggle could ignite a new conflict. We know that Ivory Coast cannot go to the elections in this situation because it will be dangerous. We need to reach a reconciliation first. We must show the world that we have matured and are a rising democracy. 
with a spirit of peace. This is what is at stake. Randolph Nogal, the newsmakers in Abidjan. Well, joining me now from Paris is Marie Roger Biloa. She's the chairwoman and CEO of International Africa International Media Group. Marie, good to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining us on the Newsmakers. Is Ivory Coast still Thanks, nursing man. the scars of 2010 and its aftermath? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, this uh, post-electoral conflict, which has been coyly dubbed, uh, which was actually sort of civil war, um, is still very present in, in, in society and, and, and politics today, although um, the current president, the incumbent president, President Wataha, has uh, really tried to, uh, reconcile, to reconcile the, uh, the Ivorians. Um, this has not been very, very successful, actually, uh, because the, the followers of Gbagbo resent very much the fact that he's been sent to, uh, to, um, to the Hague after being chased away by the French. So right. this is a, a deep divide in the society. Do they have a point that Sorry? only their man, Gbagbo, is being held to account for crimes committed by his supporters and crimes done in his name, whereas the, the other side has not had to answer for anything. Do they have a point? Oh, for, for sure, yes, they have. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the, this has happened in many countries. Uh, the winner takes it all, and it's a sort of a winner justice. But, um, and this is something who is going to stay. Um, and the way President Ouattara is trying to overcome it is to uh, boost the economy. And uh, because down on the line, the, the conflicts are about uh, sharing uh, the wealth. Right. And um, he strongly believes that uh, if the economy um, continues growing and that the pro prosperity is coming in, um, this will do more for... Uh, appeasement and peace than uh, maybe all the discussion they are trying to uh, to, 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 so to settle because um, there are things they are not ready to do, like uh, uh, sending away uh, people like Guillaume Soro to, uh, to the International Justice Court, for instance. They are not ready to do that, but uh, he believes uh, as time goes by, and uh, uh, if uh, there are more jobs for the youth, if uh, people feel like that their their material life is better, uh, all these things will uh, be lingered. Right, but if people believe that there's a two-tiered justice system, won't they be suspicious that there might be a two-tiered economy? There might be a two-tiered society as well. So we've seen soldiers. Um, who have mutinied, we've seen attacks on security installations, blamed on Bagbo fans. So maybe they'll feel that, OK, there might be prosperity, but that's only going to be for Watara's fans. Well, is that not really the debate uh, in Cote d'Ivoire? Because you mentioned the mutiny. Mutiny, the, the, the soldiers who sort of uh, rebelled against the power where... Uh, soldiers backing the president, actually. That right. was on, on his side, on, on his camp. And uh, what you also see, the, um, the, the, the real problems you really feel in society right now is within the, the camp of the president, because uh, all of them now are waiting, many of them are waiting for him to leave in 2020, and some feel... Uh, entitled to believe that they are the one to uh, to take over after him, and uh, the the big issue now is not as much the Bagbo fans uh, well protesting or what uh, whatever. The big issue now is within uh, right. the 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 partisans and uh, followers of of the president Ouattara and around Guillaume Soro who was uh, sort of uh, the leader of the armed struggle who broke uh, La Alassane Ouattara to power. And uh, people believe there has been an agreement between them that 
after his two, uh, President Ouattara's two term, he will help um, Guillaume Soro uh, to come to power. And uh, many of uh, many other um, uh, leaders in the party uh, don't agree. And so right. uh, Mr. Soro has been suspected to stir mutiny. Yeah, so that to, to show certainly. his strength to, right, that internal, to flex muscles. Yeah, that internal power struggle within the Watara camp ahead of 2020, do you think it might derail all this good work that has been done in terms of the economy in recent years, that they might tear themselves apart internally? You know, there is a danger. What, what we are afraid of and what we saw recently uh, as a, a huge amount of weapons uh, were found in in uh, the house of uh, a close ally of Guillaume Soro. So what we saw is that uh, the, armed, the, the armed struggle is not far away. They are not uh, ruled out uh, resorting to weapons in, in, in Ivorian politics. So uh, this is something which is uh, uh, concerning, which is uh, frightening, but uh, we also believe that uh, the, the memories of 2010 and 2011 are still fresh enough to scare people and, uh, and to scare them away from uh, resorting to uh, a struggle, to armed struggle again. Mm -hmm. Marie Roger Biloa, it's been a pleasure having you on the Newsmakers. Thanks so much for helping us unpack some of these issues in Ivory Coast.